Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is it. It's the last time we should have a beta before the RC or release candidate of iOS 18 is out, which should be the final version released early to developers and public beta testers. Now that iOS 18 beta eight or public beta six and iOS 18.1 beta three have been out for over a week, there's actually some more features that have been found or changed since the iOS 18 beta eight is out. What's new video. We'll talk about the current experience of iOS 18 as well in 18.1 as I've been using them full time and we'll see how they're doing for you based off the YouTube community poll. We're at the time of this video, there's over 14,000 votes, 125 comments, and I've gone through all the comments to see what the overall experience is like. We'll take a look at your comments at the end of the video, but first there's some updates and features to talk about. Apple actually brought a new find your mood station to Apple music this week. So if we go into Apple music and if we scroll down, you'll see we have energy, love, relax, focus, feeling blue, heartbreak, feel good. So those are new mood based updates that you can now listen to on Apple music. If you have it, eight games are joining Apple arcade by October with Bellatro plus NBA 2k 25 arcade edition and some others that Apple listed in a press release. So as I scroll down, you can see them futurist is cat cafe plus we have smash hit plus and some others. So I'll link this in the description if you want to check it out. Now, if you're familiar with find my those in South Korea, haven't been able to use it and will be able to soon, hopefully by spring, Apple actually released a press release in their Apple newsroom for South Korea. And they actually said it's coming to South Korea by next spring. So this is great for those that want to use find my with their phone, their iPad, Mac, AirPods, and other devices such as air tags. This will be available hopefully sooner rather than later, but it seems like it's going to be available in the spring, according to Apple. Now with iOS 18, it seems Apple is actually changing the way live activities work. These are things we've enjoyed with the clock, which is very simple. If we go into the clock, maybe start a stopwatch. We've wanted the live activity here for some time, and it just keeps us updated as to what's going on. This is actually getting a change for developers with prior versions. A developer could update a live activity once every second, but with iOS 18, this has changed to five to 15 seconds, according to a post on X by a developer. Apple actually informed them that this is an intended change and causes excess wear on your SSD storage, as well as never being intended to actually be in real time from the start of their development of it. So it looks like it won't affect things such as Uber with timers as that's just using the clock sort of feature to count down, but there will be some update issues as far as other apps that utilize this. So hopefully Apple will maybe update that, but that should help with battery life as well as it's not using all of that power regularly. Every five to 15 seconds though should help the SSD or NAND flash storage. Now, as far as new updates and features this week, well, there's some new ones to talk about. If we go into settings and within photos settings under both iOS 18 beta eight and iOS 18.1 beta three, if we scroll down, you'll see that we have cellular data with an option to turn on unlimited updates. Now this could have been there for a few betas, but I never mentioned it. And you'll see if we turn this on, it says turn on for unlimited use of cellular data to upload and download to iCloud photos when you are not connected to Wi-Fi. This may cause you to exceed your cellular data plan. So if you want to use this, you can keep it on, or if you want to turn it off to save some power while you're on cellular, you can do that or some data. If we go under the clock, there was an update. So if we go into the clock app here within clock, when I went into timers on iOS 18.1 beta three, I actually got a new Apple intelligence pop-up. You'll see it here. I took a screenshot where it says, keep track of multiple timers. It says, say something like Siri set a pasta timer for nine minutes or Siri, how much time is left on my pasta timer? So you can set multiple timers with this and keep track of them as well. And it's just letting you know. If we go back into settings and then we go to the journal app within the journal settings, if we scroll down, we have a new option for always use moment date. It says when adding a suggestion to a new entry, always use the date from the moment as the entry date. So we can turn that on if we want to use that and have it keep track of that. If we go into our reset settings options. So if we go into general and then we go down, like we're going to actually reset the phone itself, transfer or reset iPhone, go to reset. We can actually reset the handwriting style. This was there in previous betas as well, but I never mentioned it. So the handwriting style and notes, this makes more sense when you're on the iPad, but it seems to be on the iPhone as well. Apple has also removed something today. That's why I said there were some odd changes where if we go into the wallet app, so we'll find wallet here. 
if we go to add a debit or credit card, there was a new option where you could tap to sort of add it to the actual Apple wallet itself. It looks like Apple has turned this off today on the server side. So it no longer shows up for me where you just had a tap to add to the actual Apple wallet. That's something I would love to see them bring back, but for whatever reason, it looks like they turned it off and Aaron P613 on X actually found this. One other feature I wanted to mention has to do with Apple maps, but on Mac OS 15.1, if there's a pinned location or a restaurant that you're familiar with, if you tap on it, it will actually give you notes about it from different reviews. That's something that's available on Mac OS. I haven't seen it on iOS just yet. Now iPhone 16 should be shown for the first time in just a couple days. And I did a poll on this on X where it says, are you planning to buy iPhone 16 this year? Or if you're excited about it, you'll see after a day or so, there were 5,820 votes with 36% saying they're buying the pro or pro max 4% saying they're buying the 16 or 16 plus 17% aren't sure yet as we haven't seen it. And 43% are not planning to upgrade. Now this isn't necessarily everyone in the world, but it looks like many people don't want to upgrade at this point. I think as long as they get the latest features, they'll be happy with what they've got. Now with iOS 18.1, we have Apple intelligence, and I just wanted to reiterate something for those that wanted to try it out. Apple actually changed it with the latest beta. So you no longer have to change your overall region to a different location. So now all you have to do is set Siri to us English, as well as the overall language to us English. You don't have to change the device region. Then you should be able to actually enable it or request to enable it. You may have to join a wait list, but then you should be able to try out some of the features. It's a bit limited right now, but something that's really nice to at least try out with some of the new features and photos where you can clean things up. Now vision OS actually is getting some updates and actually got an update this week. In fact, it was the only device to get an update this week where it got vision OS two beta nine with the latest beta things feel much faster. Like we're getting the 90 Hertz refresh rate for sort of hand tracking. Things feel much smoother and more refined. And I'm hoping those same refinements come over to iOS 18.1 and iOS 18 RC. It seems like they've really sort of made this much faster overall. It's performing better, but unfortunately it seems that the overall widescreen monitor viewing options for this are coming at a later date, maybe with vision OS 2.1 or something else. I'm not sure when they pushed it back, but it looks like they've changed it. Now iOS 18.1 beta four, I thought maybe could have come out this past week, but it didn't. So I'm expecting it sometime next week, possibly maybe around the launch of iOS 18 RC. Now with that Apple event, we expect that on Monday on the 9th. And after that, we expect iOS 18 RC or release candidate to come out to developers and public beta testers. That will be the final version, unless there's additional issues that they push out to the public later on. So the iOS 18 public release, I would expect on the 16th with the iPhone launching on the 20th with the iPhone 16 models. Of course, we could see new AirPods and much more. And Apple actually released a firmware update for Beat Studio this past week as well, where they're updating to lit the latest version of build number 2C318. So Beat Studio Plus have been updated. We haven't seen the AirPods update. I would expect those next week as well iOS 17.6.2 could also release, or we'll see a 17.7. .7. We don't really know a time frame on this just yet, but we could see all of those very soon. When it comes to the overall experience, well, iOS 17.6.1 has been out for a few weeks at this point, and it's mostly great for most people, but some bugs have been there with YouTube pausing, but that could be related specifically to YouTube. Many people have said it's generally good. It's getting them decent battery life, but there are exceptions to this, but in general, it seems to be very stable and it should be this late in the year as we've gone through an entire year of iOS 17 updates. Now with iOS 18 beta eight or public beta six airdrop seems to be much better. So if we go into photos, maybe we'll airdrop this that I created here. So we'll airdrop this over to my 15 pro max blue here. Give it just a second and it seems to airdrop pretty quickly. No issues here. Things seem nice and fast with that. So it definitely seems to be an improvement there. There's also still some keyboard lag in this update. So some issues still going on and the phone does get hot for some, but much better than before previous betas. It seemed to get very hot and in general was a little bit laggy at times with the keyboard. If I go into notes, we'll just type, this is a new note and we are testing the keyboard. And you'll see I'm going very fast and it seems to keep up just fine. I didn't notice lag here, but I did see some lag on iOS 18.1 with that. Again, if we go into notes, so we'll try it here. This is iOS 18.1 and it seems 
like it's okay, but at times it definitely slows down, lags a little bit. That swipe home actually lagged a little bit. I don't know if you saw that frame rate drop. I have a much better experience on iOS 18 beta eight or public beta six. iOS 18.1 beta three, those has some touch issues still in telegram. So if I'm using the telegram app on my telegram server or discord, sometimes it just locks up and I can't swipe. I can't do anything. I have to close out of it and then go back into it. So for whatever reason, that seems to be specific to those couple of apps, but in general, it seems to be okay. The phone definitely gets hotter though with iOS 18.1 beta three. There's still additional bugs with the home screen dimming bug, but we'll go back there. It looks much better on this wallpaper. Sometimes it's noticeable. Sometimes it's not as far as standby. I've still heard some complaints about that. So with standby, mostly I'm hearing complaints on 17.6.1, not the iOS 18 betas. So if we go into standby, give it just a moment here. Let's see if we can edit. There we go. It took a second to sort of activate it unlocked. Let's see if we can edit the color. We'll change it maybe to orange. We'll go in exit, go back in. It's a little bit glitchy, but it seems like it's going to let me edit over and over. So definitely an issue for some, and I'm hearing about it a few times here and there, not as much as I used to. Now, before we talk about performance and heat and take a closer look at the thermals, battery life seems to be pretty poor still with iOS 18.1 beta three. I'm using it full time on my main device. And if we go down to battery, battery health, you'll see I'm at 92% with 294 cycles and it's barely getting me through the day. Oftentimes it's not. So I'm down to, well, Right now I'm at 42% battery and I've had two hours and 43 minutes of screen active time, five hours and 29 minutes of screen idle time. It's not getting me through the day most of the time. And this one here where it used hundred percent, I only got three hours and 28 minutes of screen active time out of it. It's definitely pretty poor, but it is an earlier beta, but iOS 18 beta eight seems to be decent for most people with my experience using this full time. Let's switch over to dark mode here. My full-time usage of this, I was able to get through a day. This device is at 52 cycles with hundred percent battery capacity. And you'll see the last day I used it full time after 75% of the usage, I had four hours and 38 minutes of screen active time. That's an hour longer than using it hundred percent on the other device. So it's not phenomenal, but it's definitely better than iOS 18.1 for me. 17.6.1 seems to be a little bit better. When it comes to performance, well, I mentioned some of that before with some of the lag, maybe swiping home, that's more on iOS 18.1. But some people have said with iOS 18 beta eight that they've noticed a lot of lag and slowdown. Typically a restart will fix it, but you have to give it a couple days typically for it to complete background tasks, leave it plugged in. It does a lot of that at night and it calculates all of that. So it does take some time. As far as the overall heat of the device, iOS 18.1 seems to be a little bit warmer and I've had both of them on at the same brightness. Let's go ahead and take a look with iOS 18.1 beta three at the hottest point, we're around 33 degrees Celsius and on 18 beta eight or public beta six, we're around 31.5 to 32 degrees Celsius. So there's a noticeable difference there. Just holding it in your hand, you can feel it, but it's not hot enough that you can't hold on to it. However, if I was to go into Apple intelligence features, that's another story. It heats up really fast. If I go into the cleanup feature with 18.1 beta three, and this is my iPhone 15 pro max one year later review. It's actually getting quite warm. It's taking just a moment. Let's see if we can highlight this, see if it selects it. It didn't do what I want. So let's try it again. We'll highlight this just like that. See if it highlights the whole phone. It didn't again. Let's try one more time. So we'll see what we can get here. See if we can get it to recognize the whole thing. Mostly we'll add right there and we'll give it a second. So it didn't do a great job there, but this typically heats up the phone pretty quickly and it's starting to get hot. So it's getting pretty hot running that. And I'll show you quickly with the thermal camera again, we're now at 40.5 degrees Celsius, just from opening that for a brief period of time. So I do think it's going to be difficult for Apple to sort of limit the CPU usage and keep things cool. And within thermal limits using Apple intelligence, maybe that's why most of the Apple intelligence features will be on the 16 series and later because they're supposed to fix the thermal problems. 
When it comes to overall benchmarks, well, I did run them again since it's been a little bit of time. So let's take a look. And on the left, we have the iPhone 15 plus with two 15 pro maxes here running 18 beta eight or public beta six and 18.1 beta three. So this gives you an idea of the overall scores. The multi-core scores are higher than when I initially ran them on this device. So it seems like it's doing okay. Definitely not at the point of 17.6.1 though, just yet. Now, as far as your experience, let's take a look at some of your comments. Mr. Austin felt said I'm running iOS 17.6.1 on my iPhone 13 mini, and it's great. I'm not having any issues. Battery life is getting me through the day. The random pausing in videos on YouTube seems to be fixed. Now in stark contrast to that, Lara body says, iPhone 15 Pro Max on iOS 17.6.1 re-release. Terrible battery life and device heating issues. Hardly using my iPhone and still screen on time is six to seven hours. Worst update for me. TLM Weather said iPhone 15 Pro Max and iPad Pro 11 inch M2 both running public beta six. Stable, no glitching, no errors or unexpected crashes. Battery life on iPhone is insanely good. Better connectivity, apps seem to be working fine with no issues, and the feature set is very welcome and long overdue. The iPad I haven't tested on battery as most of the time it remains plugged in on the Magic Keyboard. Jeet Banya said, I tried iOS 18 beta 8 on my iPhone 12 for a couple days, but overall the wallpaper kept bugging, battery was too bad, worse than 17.6, the apps would lag sometimes, camera would lag the most every time you closed it or opened it, it would have no very noticeable delays. Now I've shifted back to iOS 17.6, Point one, I definitely don't think I'll upgrade to iOS 18 until it's fully released and had a couple of updates in, specifically for older phones like 12. Chris Palmer 4983 said, I've been using iOS 18 public beta 6 on my iPhone 15 Pro. Battery life has been good overall. I usually get an all day battery life, but that is with moderate use. Usually it's not even a problem. Overall, I haven't experienced any major bugs. I do have a few minor bugs, but none of them seem to be easily created. So far, my performance has been smooth and snappy. Joshua Sangalo says, I'm running iOS 18 beta eight on my iPhone XR and it's great. I don't have any issues and battery life is okay for the most part, but I have an issue where car X street crashes all the time. But other than that, everything is fine. So that's everything with the latest updates. I'm looking forward to iOS 18 RC. Hopefully we'll get those additional wallpapers, maybe some new ones and bring back some of the old ones with the iPhone 16 pro wallpapers and maybe some additional features and even a change to the camera app. I hope with that new capture button expected on the iPhone 16 models, let me know what you're looking most forward to. And if you're planning to pick up an iPhone 16, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.